Good day everyone. So in this video, I am going to discuss chapter 10 entitled Institutional Procedures in the Admission and Release of an Inmate. So we will talk about the admission procedure or process. So when I say admission process is kung ikukumit na or ikukulong na sa loob ng um institution yung isang offender. Okay? So, after registration, the following procedures of admission are undertaken by the staff for every prisoner entrusted to their custody. So, number one procedure is that checking of commitment paper. Okay? When we say commitment paper kasi, it is a written order of the court or any other competent authority consigning an offender to a jail or prison for confinement. Kung baga, pag sinabing commitment order, ito po yung order ng court na ikukumit na sa loob ng prison or ng jail yung isang offender. That is for confinement. Okay? So, checking of commitment paper. So, the commitment paper is in due form. If it bears the signature of the judge, so dapat po yan po yung content ng uh, commitment paper para po masabing valid yung commitment paper na yun. So it bears the signature of the judge, the signature of the COC or the clerk of court, and also yung seal of the court or the committing authority. So it check po muna yun, okay? Kung totoo ba na yung taong pinipresent nila ay yung ikukumit talaga sa loob ng kulungan. Okay? So, number two, establishing the identity of the prisoner. So, this is done by, the, by comparing and as examining the fingerprint and photograph of the inmate contained in the commitment order. This is to make sure that the person being committed is the one named in the commitment order. So, like what I have said, number two po dyan is dapat i-identify muna nung admitting officer yung prisoner. Okay? Yung identity ng prisoner kung yung nandoon ba sa loob or yung nilalaman ba na content nung commitment order ay the same na person na ikinukumit nila. Okay? So, paano yun gagawin? Siyempre, they need to check the fingerprint and the photograph na nakakontain doon sa commitment order. Siyempre, ipagkukumpare nila yung photograph at fingerprint nung taong ikinukumit nila kung siya rin ba yun. Okay? After that, the admission of the inmate is undertaken in the area which is physically separated from the general population. Iba po kasi yung place kung saan po i-undertake yung pagpapakumit or i-admit yung isang inmate sa loob ng kulungan. So, which is physically separated from the general population. So, the inmate is photographed front and side view. So, yun po ang gagawin. Pagka po ikinulong na po yung tao, pangatlo pong procedure is, kukunin po ang kanyang photograph, front and then the side views, and then fingerprinted and assign a permanent prison number. Okay? And after that, the male inmates are given the standard regulation haircut. Okay, meron pong proper na haircut para po sa mga male or mga kalalakihan na inmate. Okay, and also, yung kanilang beard and mustache ay dapat pong ma-shave off o ma-shaven off. Okay. Number four, searching the prisoner. Okay, meron po tayong tinatawag na um, operation uh, shakedown. Okay. Operation Shakedown is the inspection or complete body search of an inmate upon admitting in the jail or prison. Okay? Searching the prisoner, it is a complete body search where frisking or yung pagkapkap na tinatawag natin is undertaken to look for contrabands. 
hair pieces and wigs are not allowed unless approved by the superintendent. So, take note, hair pieces and wigs are not allowed unless inaprobahe ito ng superintendent. Okay? All personal items must be inspected thoroughly and items not allowed at the prison such as cash, jewelry, watches, and weapons are deposited with a receipt to be issued by the staff and given to the prisoner. So, ang gagawin po nila dito, yung mga items po na ipinagbabawal sa loob ng kulungan, ide-deposit muna nila yon sa custodial officer. Okay? Bibigyan po yun ng receipt. Two copies po yun. Copy ng prisoner at copy ng uh, office. Okay? So, alalagay po lahat doon yung mga items at saka yung quantity. Kung ilang peraso po yun. Okay? So, all articles taken from the inmate shall be returned to him upon his discharge unless previously disposed of at the inmate request or ordered condemned by the superintendent after a lapse of a two years. Personal effects of an inmate and other essential items to his well-being is allowed as well as other electrical equipment which is intended for common use and not for luxurious, sa gaya po ng mga electric pan, pwede po yun sa loob ng kulungan. Mga any other electrical equipment, which is uh, pwede pong i, uh, intended po siya for common use ng kanyang mga co-inmate. Pwede po yun. Okay? And, kagaya nga po ng mga pera, ng mga jewelry, bibigyan po yun ng receipt para nang sa ganun, pagka nakalaya na po siya, yun po yung magiging basis niya doon sa mga items na kailangan niyang kunin pagka laya niya sa loob ng kulungan. Okay? The same with monies. Okay, kung ilang mang, ilang mang pera yun or magkano man yun, so dapat nakareceipt po yun. Okay? Number five, issuance of clothes and equipment. Bedding and suitable clothing are given in accordance with degree of sentence. Whenever practicable, One blanket, mat, pillow with case, mosquito net, set of mess kit, and pair of slippers. And the prisoners lead to the quarantine unit. You know what? During our board exam, in our batch way back 2016, lumabas ito sa board exam. So, sabi doon, among the following are necessary equipment. Or, yes, na i-issue doon sa inmate except one. Okay? So, yes po, pati po yung slippers, kailangan po dapat i-provide yan ng institution na ibibigay po doon sa uh, inmate. Okay? Yan po lahat. Mat, pillow, blanket, pillow with, uh, pillow with case, mosquito net. Set of mess kit, yan po yung pagkainan, kutsara, tinidor. Okay? And, The prisoner is lead to the quarantine unit. Okay, after po niya, pagka-admit po niya, di pa po, meron po tayong tinatawag na RDC in our previous videos dun sa chapter 7, if I am not mistaken. Sa RDC po, ikakwarantine po muna yung inmate within a period of, of 55 days. Okay? Ano, ah, ano, I mean, 5 days siyang i-isolate, okay, kasi i-diagnose po siya, and then 55 days po sa RDC for uh, treatment planning. So, that is for a total of 60 days. So, quarantine cell po is 5 days, and then the remaining 55 days is in the RDC for treatment planning. Okay? So, ikakwarantine po siya ng 5 days, okay, to ensure that the prisoner is not afflicted or suffering from any contagious disease. Para po i-test siya na wala nga talagang nakakahawang sakit yung inmate. Okay? So, we have here the color of uniform as to security classification. Pag po minimum, uh, maximum security inmate, ang kulay po ng kanilang uniform ay tangerine. Tangerine is also known as orange. Okay? Tangerine po kasi kagaya po ng ray ng uh, sunlight. Okay? Medium security is kulay blue ang uniform. Minimum security is brown. And then, detainee is kulay ng gray. 
Okay, yan po ang color classification or color uniform as to security classification. Okay. Number six. Okay, so na-issue na sila ng damit. Okay, ngayon pagkatapos po niyan, i-orient na po yung inmate. Okay, or yung prisoner. Orientation procedure, we have the so-called booklet which contain the rules and regulations implemented at the prison is given with all the pertinent matters discussed by the prison staff. This is initial contact of the prisoner with the center and is deemed meaningful towards the aim to reform him. Okay? Yung booklet na po yun, nandoon na po lahat yung mga rules and regulation and all the policies inside the jail and prison na kailangan nilang sundin habang sila ay naka-confined. Okay, after that, number seven, we have testing programs. Okay, ano ba yung suitable na pro programs na ibibigay doon sa inmate para siya po ay i-reform or i-rehabilitate? Okay, so that the psychological and psychiatric group testing is conducted to the personality of the inmate and predicts the manner in which he will interact with other prisoners. So, there will be the so-called psychological and psychiatric group testing so that they will be able to test the personality of the inmates, the characteristics, the behavior in which yun yung kanyang ipapakita doon sa kanyang mga kapwa uh, inmate. Okay, baka naman siya ay dangerous, baka naman siya ay harmful. Okay, so dapat po, yun po ay ma-evaluate at ma-examine during the psychological psychiatric group testing. Okay, after that is there will be the so-called staff conference. So, after all the tests, interviews, and examinations has been conducted the staff conference or case conference is undertaken. Okay? It is in the said forum that the inmates program for treatment and training is planned. So, ito na po yung tinatawag nating treatment planning. Okay? When we say treatment planning po, ito po yung tentative na program na ibibigay dun sa inmate kung magiging effective po ba ito sa kanya na pang reform or pang re- habilitate. Okay? Kagaya na lang po ng mga religious programs, uh, educational program, livelihood, recreational, uh, medical and dental and so on. Counseling included po yan. Included po dyan. So, ngayon po, ipaplano po dito sa staff conference kung ano po yung mabuti na mga programa na ibibigay dun sa inmate kung saan yun po ang magiging way ng ating institution na baguhin yung characteristics at behavior ng isang offender. Okay? So, now naman po is the admission summary. Pagkatapos naman na po ngayon ng staff conference, andyan na po yung admission summary. It is a written compilation made by the staff regarding their findings on the prisoner. Okay? So, di ba nga rin, nag, nagkaroon na ng case conference. So, na, ginawa nila yung plano para dun sa inmate na yun. So, isasummarize nila yung mga findings nila doon sa inmate na yon. So, it is used by the classification committee as a guide in carrying out the rehabilitation program of the prisoner in the operating institution. Okay? This is the nucleus of the cumulative case history of the inmates. Its contents are as follows. So, ito po yung nilalaman ng um, summary okay, nung inmate. So, complete account of the legal aspect of the case. So, ano ba yung kanyang kaso? Summary of the prisoner's criminal history. Kung ano po ba yung mga naging kaso niya, ilan po ba yun, at kung ano-ano po ba yung mga kaso niya. Okay? Biography or social history of the prisoner. Physical condition, educational status, kung ano po yung kanyang natapos. For example, high school lang siya, high school level. Okay, hindi siya nakapag-graduate ng high school, hindi siya nakapag-kolehyo. Vocational interest, experience and competence. Recreational interest, sa na lang po, pagka mahilig po ba siya 
sa atle- athletics, mahilig ba siya sa mga arts, mahilig ba siya sa mga musics, kasi po pag recreational po, ang tawag po natin dyan is yung mga iba't ibang makakapagtanggal ng lumbay ng isang inmate sa loob ng kulungan at saka yung boredom niya sa loob ng kulungan. But you need to take note po guys that if we said that that is a recreational activity, ginagawa lang po yan kapag po um, free time ng mga inmates. Kasi hindi lang naman po yun yung program na ibibigay sa kanila. Meron din po silang mga religious, meron din silang mga educational programs, and so on. So, ginagawa lang po yan during their free time. Okay? Example, mahilig siya sa basketball. So, pwede siyang bigyan ng mga ganon. Athletic program po yun. Mahilig siya sa arts. Mahilig siya sa music. Okay? Ganon po yung mga ibibigay na treatment planning para doon sa inmate na yun. Okay? Psychological characteristics, yan na po yung behavior. Behavior the RDC and reaction to group psychotherapy. And also the religious background and interest. Ano ba yung um, belief nung isang inmate na yun is she a Catholic, uh, INC, um, born again Christians, and so on. Okay, so yun po lahat yung mga case history or yung mga uh, summary nung isang inmate bago po talaga mag uh, ibigay sa kanya yung programa na suitable sa kanya base doon sa mga investigation or case history na kinandak sa kanya. Okay? Transfer out of the center. So, ngayon, natapos na siya sa RDC, sa loob ng prison. Natapos na siya sa RDC. So, after completion of the admission summary, the prisoner is transferred out of the center to the operating institution. The tentative program arrive or determine is approved by the director of prison. So, hindi po kaagad-agad na kapag nag-conduct sila ng case study doon sa isang inmate, is i-implement na agad sa kanya. Hindi po. Kailangan po munang aprobahan yan ng director of prison. The said summary is forwarded to the classification and treatment division of the prison for implementation while waiting for his permanent residence assignment the prisoner stays at the orientation unit. Doon muna siya mag-stay habang po inihintay niya kung saan po siya ma-assign na kulungan. Therein, he is guided to choose his vocation program. Okay? For example, meron siyang experience ng um, ang tawag dito, yung kagaya po ng pag-welding or electrician meron siyang mga experience ng ganon, yun po yung mga pwedeng ibigay na vocation program sa kanya. Kagaya na din po yung mga, uh, tawag dito, yung sa mga part ng mga TESDA, okay, yun po yung mga pwede po nilang ibigay na vocation program doon sa inmate. Okay, gagayit po nila doon during the uh, stay in the orientation unit. Okay? So, after that, an inmate may be transferred to another institution to bring said inmate closer to his family or as part of the rehabilitation program upon the order of the director acting on the recommendation of the superintendent. Ito po guys, di ba remember, meron po tayong 7 na units under the Bureau of Correction. We have the National Believed Prison, we have the Leyte Regional Prison, San Ramon, we have the Iwahig, we have the CIW for women, and then we have also the Davao, the and then the Sablayan. Pito po yan. So, ngayon po, pwede pong i-transfer sa ibang institution yung isang inmate kung saan po mas malapit yung kanyang kapamilya. For example po, siya po ay taga Davao, Meron naman pong prison sa Davao, the Davao Penal Colony. Pwede po siyang transfer from National Believed Prison, which is located in uh, Muntinlupa. Pwede po siyang ilipat, ilipat sa da, Davao Penal Colony para mas malapit po siya sa kanyang kapamilya. Nang sa ganun naman po, mabisita pa rin nila yung kanilang kapamilya. Okay? So, bas, basta po yun po ay meron pong recommendation at meron pong approval nung director of prison. 
Okay? Ngayon naman po, paano po yung mga insane prisoner or yung mga nabaliw? Okay? They will be relocated to a mental hospital. Okay? At saka po yung mga ibang inmates, they are recommended to transfer to the AFP stock aid with the approval of the director. Kaya nga po, di ba, meron kayong mga nakikita na sa mga TV na hindi po nakukulong sa mga mismong prison but rather pinupunta po sa mga kampo ng Armed Forces of the Philippines. Okay, basta po meron pong approval ng prison director. Okay. So, ito po yung classification board or yung classification composition. Okay? Ang chairman po is the superintendent, vice chairman is chief RDC, medical officer, chief agro section, and chief overseer ay mga members ng classification board. Okay, take note po, chairman is the superintendent of the uh, prison. Okay. Admission classification meeting. So, this is the initial classification meeting which takes place after the transfer of the prisoner from the RDC to the operating institution. So, this interview and consultation is held to determine the realistic plan or program of treatment best suited for the convict to help him in his reformation at the prison. So, ito na po guys, ito na po yung preliminary na ikakandak nilang meeting para po malaman nila ano ba yung realistic na programa or treatment na pinaka the best para doon sa convict at matulungan siya sa kanyang pagre-rehabilitate okay, or pagbabago doon sa loob ng hulungan. Okay? The principal decision should be arrived or as follows. So, ito po guys, custody classification. Yung inmate ba na yun, ay pasok po ba siya sa maximum, security, medium, security, minimum? Di ba po, remember, pag sinabing maximum security, uh, maximum security uh, prisoner, ang kanila pong sentence ay 20 years and below. Pag medium security, yan na po yung 20 years and below. Pag mga minimum na po, yan na po yung mga 6 um, months na lang yung titira sa kanilang sentence, tapos mga kalaya na sila, yan na po yung mga 60 years old and above, yung mga trusty, okay, and so on. Okay, so, custody classification, kung ano ba yung custody na ibibigay doon sa inmate na yun. Okay, kung siya po ay incorrigible, kung siya po ay hardened criminal, kung siya po ay intractable, kung siya po ay highly dangerous, syempre po doon sa maximum security uh, prison. Okay, sa housing yun nga po kung saan po siya, institution na ipupunta or transfer. Okay, medical and psychiatric treatment. Okay, for example, doon sa kanyang diagnosis, na diagnose na siya ay may sakit sa puso. Okay? So, syempre naman po, bibigyan siya ng medical treatment. Okay? And also with psychiatric treatment, kung meron man po siyang mga um, sakit sa pag-iisip, kung hindi man okay, yung kanyang uh, mind nung siya ay na-confine or na-admit sa loob ng kulungan. Occupational and vocational training assignment, saan ba ang kanyang interest? For example po kasi, meron po tayong mga livelihood program. Okay, kagaya na lang po ng um, basket waving, mga paggawa ng mga um, bags, shoes, okay, mga furniture, pwede din po yun. Mga livelihood or occupational po yun. Mga vocational po, mga body uh, automotive. Okay? Mga paggawa ng mga electric, electrician or electricity. And so on. Iba-iba po yan. Mga occupation and vocational training assignment. Meron din po pag mga kababaihan. Karamihan po dyan, dressmaking. Mga uh, tawag dito yung sa mga parlor, paggawa ng mga dishwashing liquids, 
Okay, marami po yan. Ituturo po yan sa loob ng kulungan. Meron pong mga trainer. Okay, para po matrain sila kung ano po yung kanilang dapat na gawin. Okay, general education program. Yan nga po, kailangan po nilang malaman kung ano po yung tinapos ng isang inmate. Kung, for example, siya lang po ay elementary graduate. So, possible po pwede siyang bigyan ng ng general education sa high school. Okay. Case work and social services, religious and recreational recommendation, kung siya po ay Catholic, syempre po mayroon po yung schedule kung kailan po pumupunta ang mga um, priest ng Catholic doon sa loob ng kulungan na magbigay ng religious service, mga born again, mga iglesia, bumibisit po sila doon para magbigay po ng religious guidance and counseling. Okay, the same with recreational recommendation, kung mahilig siya sa mga athletes, mga musics, mga arts, yun po yung mga recommend nila ng recreational program nung inmate. Okay? So, separate facilities, ito po guys, magkakaiba po yung mga kulungan or mga selda nung mga inmates na ito. Ito po yung kanilang category. Finally, sentence prisoner, ito na po yung mga convicted Okay, death convicts, yung death po ang kanilang sentensya, incorrigible inmates, so when we say incorrigible inmates, yan po yung mga hindi na po talaga kayang baguhin yung pag-uugali. Okay, detainees, okay, detainees mga undergoing trial pa lang, preliminary investigation, wala pa pong mga, um, wala pang mga final judgment ng court, okay? First time offenders, sexual deviates, yan po yung mga sexual offenders po yan. Different din po yan. Drug dependents, foreign national, pag may mga foreigner po or mga alien na nag-commit ng crime sa ating country, iba din po yung kanilang facility sa loob ng kulungan. Members of cultural minorities, former members of AFP and, and PNP, Age and infirm whose physical condition impairs their mobility to na po yung mga matatanda. Those suffering from mental diseases, syempre po, or abnormalities, pinupunta po yan sa, itinatransfer po sila sa mga mental institution. And also foreign nationals, yun nga po yung sinabi ko kanina, mga alien or mga foreigners. Okay. Naman, next is pre-release treatment. It is a program specifically designed to prepare the offender during a limited period prior to his release on parole. It deals with the transition from confined and regulated life to a normal independent life. Several pre-release programs are as follows. Okay? Pag sinabi kasing pre-release program, ito po yung pag malapit ka na pong lumaya. Kumbaga, kung hindi man po malapit mo nang matapos yung sentensya mo, pwede ka pong mabigyan ng parole. Okay? Pre-release treatment po ang ibibigay sa iyo. Ito na po yung magkakaroon ng transition na from confinement, magkakaroon na po yung paunti-unti na parang adjustment mo doon sa katotohanan na malapit ka na ngang makalaya. Okay, ito po, leave for work which allows the offender to be employed in the community at day provided he return to the institution at night. Ito guys, mabibigyan ng chance na makapagtrabaho yung inmate sa community sa umaga and then uh, babalik po siya ng gabi sa kulungan. Okay. Special information sessions which covers parole conditions and employment opportunities. So, magkakaroon po ng mga parang session or mga meetings kung saan po ilalahat po nila doon yung mga kondisyon ng parole na kailangan mong sundin kapag ka nabigay na po yung parole sa'yo. At ganoon din po yung mga employment opportunities na naghihintay sa'yo pagka laya mo. Granting greater freedom inside the institution. Okay, merong uh, mas malaya ka kaysa doon sa mga maximum, sa mga medium, which is restricted yung kanilang mga movements. Okay, granting greater freedom inside the institution wherein the prisoner is allowed to wear civilian clothes, lodging in separate quarters, giving him more le leisure 
opportunity and generally giving him less supervision inside the prison. Siyempre naman, no, alam mo na mga kalaya ka, alam naman mag-violate ka pa ng mga policies, mga rules and regulations sa loob ng kulungan. Kaya ka nga po bibigyan ng less na supervision sa loob ng kulungan kasi you know naman na sooner or later, pwede ka nang maka Laya. Kaya nga po binibigyan ng, ng freedom na magsuot ka ng, ng own civilian clothing mo or even mag ka or matulog ka doon sa separate na quarters mo. Okay. Group and individual counseling to lessen his worries and anxiety regarding his return to the free world. Okay. Yan, magbibigay po ng mga group counseling or individual counseling para po ma-briefing ka or ma-orient ka po at ma-lessen naman po yung worries and anxieties mo upon your return in the free community. Okay. Pre-release leaves for a few hours a day to enable the prisoner to arrange outside residence and procure pertinent papers. Ayan, bibigyan ka din po ng chance na makalabas sa loob ng kulungan for a few hours para po maayos mo yung bahay mo at saka po yung mga pertinent papers na kailangan mo upon your release. Release of an inmate. So, ano nga ba yung iba't ibang ways kung papaano po makakalaya yung isang inmate natin. Siyempre naman po, upon the expiration of the sentence, yung ibig sabihin po, na-serve mo na yung sentensya mo. Kung for example, yan ay 6 years to 8 years, o tapos mo na yung 8 years, pwede ka nang makalaya, of course, because that is the so-called service of sentence. Okay? Pwede din pong by order of the court, pag nag-order po ng court na ka kayo po ay makaka-release o makakalaya, pwede po yon Or pag kayo po ay nag-grant ng probation, parole, or pardon. Okay, magkakaiba po mga procedures naman po yan. Basta po, pwede ka pong makalaya by probation, pardon, or parole. Sino po yung mga iba't ibang authority na makakapag-approve ng release ng isang inmate or detainee. So, ito po yon Supreme Court or lower court in case of grant of bail or of acquittal. Pag acquitted ka po sa kaso mo, syempre po yung court po magbibigyan yan na ikaw ay acquitted, syempre pag, pag detainee ka, makakalaya ka niyan. President of the Philippines, pagka po executive clemency, kagaya po ng pardon, kagaya po ng amnesty, Reprieve, commutation of sentence. Okay, yan po yung mga ginagrat ng ating presidente. Board of Pardons and Parole. Okay, for parole. Director of Bureau of Correction upon expiration of the sentence of the inmate. So, yung, yung director of BUCOR, siya po ang mag-i-issue ng final release mo. Okay? Final discharge order. Okay, pagka na-serve mo na yung buong sentensya mo. Before the release of a detainee or inmate, he or she shall be properly identified. Bakit? Bago daw po palayain yung isang inmate, kailangan daw po identify yung inmate. Siyempre, that is to make sure na siya nga ba talaga yung papalayain mo na the same ba yung taong ikinumit mo is the same ba doon sa papalayain mo. Okay? Paano po yun i-recognize or identify? Sa pamamagitan po ng pag examine ng kanyang fingerprints and any other identification marks shall be confirmed with those which were taken when he was admitted in prison. Iko-compare po yung kanyang admission Uh, documents doon sa kanyang release documents. Kung the same po ba yun. And any change in his distinguishing marks, marks since admission, proper documentation is required prior to his release. Inmates shall, shall be released without delay. Okay? Pagka po nagbigay na po ng court order na siya po ay release or final discharge ng view court director Siyempre naman po, kailangan pong palayain without any delay yung inmate. Okay? Or else, the authority 
will be held criminally liable. Pwede po sila maging liable kung hindi po nila sinunod yung pagpapalaya sa'yo in due time. Manner of releasing. So, ito nga po, sabi ko kanina, pwede pong ma-release ang isang prisoner by service of sentence, na serve mo na yung sentensya mo, order of court, parole, pardon, amnesty, and any lawful order of the competent authority. If feasible, a prisoner shall be notified of his release at least one week before the date of discharge. So, bago po uh, lumaya yung isang inmate, dapat po ma-inform na po siya or ma-notify na po siya one week bago po yung kanyang release. Okay? Before an offender is released, he shall be properly identified to ensure that he is the same person received and to be released. No person may be released on verbal or telephone order. Hindi po pwede yan. That is a general rule. Wala pong papalayain na inmate by virtue of verbal or telephone order. Okay, dapat po documented po yan. Meron po dapat seal ng court, ng sign ng judge, signed by uh, clerk of court kung court order man po yan. Okay, and also final discharge papers coming from the view court director or any competent authority. Okay. An offender shall be released promptly and without unreasonable delay after a court order under proper receipt. Okay, di ba? Remember, nung siya po ay inadmit, meron po siyang mga dineposit na mga ari-arian, kagaya na lang po ng mga ari-arian talaga. Pwede bang mga kwan lang, items lang. Kagaya po ng mga um, jewelry, watch, money, Okay. Ngayon po, all money earned and other valuable held in trust when first admitted shall be returned to the offender upon his release. So, ibabalik po yun sa kanya. Okay. Lahat po ng kanyang mga pera na naipon sa loob ng kulungan kasi nga, di ba, nagkakaroon sila ng livelihood program, occupational program. So, yung mga naipon nilang mga napagbenta na pera, ibibigay po yun sa kanila kapag sila po ay makakalaya na. The release offender shall be issued a certificate of discharge from the warden or jailer. Take note, that is certificate of discharge. So, next, we have the RA 6127 or Republic Act 6127 entitled Grant of Full-Time Period of Preventive Detention. Ito na po, guys. Pag sinabing preventive detention kasi, guys, kapag, for example, um, uh, undergoing trial ka for a period of 9 years, so nakadetain ka po ng 9 years, pero wala ka pang final judgment. Ngayon, nung pang 10th year mo, nabigyan ka na ng final judgment. Pagka isa-serve mo na po yung sentence mo sa prison, Okay, maka-count na po yung preventive detention mo noong nandun ka pa lang sa jail kapag ipupunta ka na po sa prison. Okay? It is the presentation of commitment order from the court of origin and the other documents such as summary of the case, referral from the arresting officer. Receiving officer shall study the contents of the carpeta and commitment order. Carpeta and commitment order Karpeta po kasi nandun lahat yung mga institutional record ng inmate, yung kanyang case, yung kanyang mga fingerprint, yung kanyang booking report, yung kanyang commitment paper, and so on. Nandun po lahat yung sa loob ng karpeta niya. Okay? Yan po ay folder ng isang inmate. Okay? Thereafter, the offender shall be informed whether or not he can avail of the grants of full-time credit on the period he has served during preventive detention. Okay? May inform po siya kung siya po ay uh, makaka-grant or makaka-avail ng preventive imprisonment or detention. Okay? Depende po kung full time na uh, ka-counted po nila yon or hindi. The warden shall require the detainee to fill in the detainee's manifestation. So, ngayon, pagkatapos mong i-fill up 
yung detained manifestation, it shall be certified by the warden, and then the warden, through the BJMP Inmates Welfare Officer, shall coordinate with the probation and parole officer for the speedy processing of the documents. And then after that, the warden shall wait for the final decision of the court before granting of the grant of full-time credit of the period of the detainee's detention. Carpeta is the documents required by BUCOR before admitting a sentenced prisoner. Okay, carpeta po, manggagaling po yan sa jail, then, ta-transfer po yan doon sa prison. Kapag i-admit na po yung isang inmate, nakalagay po doon sa loob ng karpeta lahat na po ng prison record, uh, jail record, booking rep record, commitment paper, lahat na po yon fingerprint, photograph, nandun po sa loob ng karpeta. Yan po ang ipepresent ng mga jail officer doon sa BUCOR kapag ipapa-admit na po nila or ikukumit na nila yung isang sentence prisoner. Okay? So, hanggang doon lang po yung topic natin for this video. So, please uh, stay tuned for many more videos. I think we still have one video or... Ah, no, this is the end. This is the last video for, chap uh, for the subject uh, Core Admin 1, the Institutional Correction. So, please... Um, still be updated for more videos wherein pwede pong makahelp sa inyo doon sa mga ibang subjects po ninyo. So, thank you and have a good day.